a booktube it's kim at middle of the book farch and here you go these are my final picks for the booktube prize in fiction and by the time we're reading in the finals all of these books are the cream of the crop so they've made it through months and months of contest and there's not really any bad books in the bunch but because we are responsible for reading I have to put one at number six and five and so on and so on. All right, number six, going from bottom to top, is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. It is the story of twin sisters, twin African-American sisters living in the South. One of them passes for white. And in that, in that ability for her to pass as white, she has aspirations to leave the South, to leave her existence, and live as a white woman. And the repercussions of that are to her are constantly living in a lie and in hiding. Um, the reason I put this as number six is it's, um, the writing is fine. It was a very fast paced book. I was kept being interested in reading and I kept wanting to pick it up. It's a fast read, but there were so many ends that kind of were left loose um, I, I was hoping for something a little bit deeper. Um, there was a lot of coincidences that happened throughout the novel in order for the story to get to where it ended up. And it was, it was okay for me. I know a lot of people love this book, um, but it wasn't, uh, clearly wasn't my favorite because I rated it as number six, but it's not a horrible book. So, Number five is a book I read electronically a while ago, and it's The Prettiest Star by Carter Sickles. This is a book about a young man in the mid 80s um, who's in his, not even in his mid 20s yet. He contracts AIDS and is dying, so he ends up going back to his Appalachian home, his family, from New York City. Um, it's a really heartbreaking story, pretty beautifully written. Um, and the ending, you know, this is a book that makes you cry because it is, it's sad, it's heartbreaking, but it's also um, kind of a victory. It's victorious in a way. Um, it was, again, it was a really good book. I, I didn't love the writing, but it was very good. Number four is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwaki Amezi. And this is a novel that opens up with... Um, Vivek Oji's dead body being found by his mother on right in, in on their porch in their front door and we we read that event and then we go back in time to read the backstory as to how Vivek Oji ended up dead on his parents porch I really enjoyed reading this one it was fairly obvious uh what what kind of propelled the story what propelled the life of Vivek Oji. And so it, there wasn't a lot that came as a surprise. And I think maybe the author wanted to have that surprise, um, but that, that wasn't there for me. But I did enjoy the reading experience and thought it was pretty good. Number three, here's where, um, this is my top three. And I, I thought I knew going into the finals, which two books were gonna be number one and number two. I was convinced, but number two got taken over. And I, again, shockingly to me, because number three for me is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This was a five-star book for me um, when I first finished it a while ago. I love this book. I love this novel. This was the 2020 Booker winner. Um, and I loved it, just like so many other people on BookTube. I don't really have a lot of criticism of it. Um, the only thing that I didn't love was at the beginning, we we read about Shuggy as an older teenager and what he's doing in the present. And the book goes back in time into his history. I didn't really think that technique needed to be there, but it is. Um, but the rest, the, the vast majority of the book was just beautiful. Number two, a total, total shock, uh, shockingly took over number two for me. 
It was a dark horse, no pun intended, but it's My Dark Vanessa by Mary Elizabeth Russ. Uh, sorry, Kate Elizabeth Russell. I had my finger over it and I forgot. Um, my Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell tells the story of a teenage girl who says she's fallen in love with her English teacher. And the chapters go back and forth between the girl while she's still in high school and still under the authority of this teacher. And then as she's grown into her 30s and her looking back on this, this moment in time in her educational career, it has permanently changed her life, the experience with this teacher. She's struggling as an, a 30 something year old adult to come to terms with, did he abuse her or was she truly in love with him? Um, it is, there are times when it's absolutely repulsive and horrifying to read because we read what the teacher does to the student, not only in the grooming process, but in the physical acts that he perpetrates against the student. And he has all of the justifications as to why he does what he does. And at the time, he has convinced her that she loves him. And she believes at 15 years old that she has the wherewithal and the maturity to decide she's in love. Um, it is horrifying. It is, uh, you. I felt for her as a parent because I could see what was happening. And I just wanted to protect this character. Um, by the time she's in her 30s, she is in a dead end job. She never actually graduated college. Her life was irreversibly changed by everything that happens. And there are other students that come to her to look for her support because they have also claimed abuse against this teacher. I absolutely love the writing in this novel. It, I just, did not want to put, I think I had a few late nights where I, I could not put it down. I thought the writing was very thoughtful. It exactly fit the nature of the story. It, the, the conflict in thoughts in this character as a young teenager and as an adult was perfectly done in my opinion. Um, so well done. I was kind of blown away that I liked this book because at first I thought it was kind of more in the YA realm, but it is not, and I think it's excellently done. Now, number one. My number one I knew was going to be number one before I voted, and I had already read this book. This was um, one of, I think this was one of my top two favorite reads of last year, and this is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. There was... I didn't think there was going to be anything that would have been able to surpass this, and nothing did. Uh, this is the story of Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, who died when he was 11 years old. And O'Farrell takes that very, very minuscule amount of information from literary history and created this novel surrounding his death. It is just gloriously written. The description, the way she crafted the words, the way she crafted the sentences, just continued to push me through the novel. And I'm a fast reader, but I slowed down on purpose because I did not want to miss any of her description, her word choice, the emotions that just poured out of the writing. This is a novel about grief, about the extremes of a parent's love. So many things went into this. The journey of a flea, <laughs> the journey of a flea, blew me away in this book. And if you've read it, or if you're planning on reading it, you will know. I just thought it was brilliant. And it was emotion inducing. I cried. I I hate, rarely cry during a novel, but I cried. And not just a, a little tear glistening. I The tears were coming down my cheeks. Um, absolutely love this book. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought, if you voted in the fiction finals, and I'd love to hear your feedback. See you in the next video, everybody. Bye.